Now the conceptual questions for magnetism intro, I was looking at it and uh, some of them look too super familiar. And the reason is, uh, I've done these questions before, or rather um, they are in recorded videos that are available to you as part of the module. Some, you will have seen it as you are going through the lecture. And I think the one that I've covered specifically is this uh, challenge question. Um, so one of the past virtual class sessions, I, um, uh, I, I uh, did this and it's been edited into its own set of video here. So it's here, you know, chapter 11, problem 13, there it is. <laughs> um, so I guess, uh, um, yeah, let me let that be the short, th short thing I say about that question because frankly, uh, you should have seen it while you are going through the lecture. Um, and there are two other questions that I've done that didn't make it into regular lecture videos, but I linked them into um, the homework help page, uh, which uh, the way the module is ordered, this comes after you've submitted here, but uh, you can skip around. And the very first video here, which covers chapter 11 questions one and nine. Um, and I think I also lectured a little bit on magnetic force geometry. I hope that's what it's. Um, so that's these questions one and three. But uh, let me say something brief about that uh, since I'm here and I, I'm doing this as a request uh, from a request from people just uh, wanting me to say, say something short about conceptual questions. So, um, but that video gives away the answer for this and that. So if you feel you need more information after hearing this, then do go take a look at the video. Uh, so the question that one is asking you to basically compare and contrast electric and magnetic fields. And it comes down to the, um, you can see it almost in the mathematical definition or um, description of the electric and magnetic field. So electric field is defined through this relationship. Electric force is given by charge times the electric field. And there are a lot of properties of the field you can get from that. Uh, force for one is parallel to the field. Magnetic force, uh, do I use M or B? I usually use B, because uh, <laughs> that's the letter that we use for magnetic field. Uh, magnetic force is given by charge times this mathematical object, cross product, velocity, cross product with the magnetic field. And you might have seen this in your lab uh, yesterday, that when you are playing with the magnets and uh, uh, the beam of electrons you had for the lab, the way the beam of electrons interact with the magnet, it's not quite intuitive. It's not uh, directly repelled or uh, attracted to the magnet. It's, um, and, and this is the underlying relationship. This cross product gives you the direction of the, the magnetic force. And um, and a lot there are a lot of other things as you are comparing and contrast that follows from these definitional differences. And the other video goes more that. Okay, question two. Uh, it says answer these questions. Is it possible for the magnetic force on a charge moving in a non-zero magnetic field to be zero? Answer is yes. I will have you come up with an explanation. And while you are doing that on your own. I'll just point to this. Can you make this cross product zero without either V or B being zero? And the answer is yes. <laughs> Look at the review cross product until you can see when the cross product will be zero without the two vectors being zero. Okay, is it possible for the electric force on a charge moving in a non-zero electric field to be zero? No, it's not possible. The moving part is irrelevant. It uh, goes back to here. If electric field is not zero, then as long as Q is not zero, force must be non-zero. <laughs> there is an, uh, enough complexity in this mathematical relationship to have that beautiful result you can get with the magnetic force. Um, so what is uh, necessary for the net force due to electric field and magnetic field to be zero on a charge moving through a region of non-zero electric and magnetic fields. Oh, um, this is something covered in your textbook, actually. Um, so, and I think that's why your textbook is able to ask this question. Let me just show you what you should search for in your textbook. 
So in your textbook, I think you can search for either velocity selector or across the field. Uh, let me try searching for velocity selector because um, that's really the practical use of this kind of arrangement, velocity selector. And yeah, there's a, uh, this section apparently has that, but let me go to 11.7 .7 because that looks like it's more straightforward application. So um, ions produced are sent to the velocity selector where, um, yeah, yeah. So this is the description of that velocity selector with across the fields arrangement of electric field, which is at uh, ninety degrees to magnetic field, and these values are chosen so that for a charge of a particular velocity, it'll feel zero net force, and that particular speed is this. Feels like this might not be the same place where they discussed the velocity vel selector. Let me see. If in 11.6, they described it in more detail with that. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I mean, so yeah, this is, that is the description. And I guess they never really do proper um, thing. But, but yeah, that, that's really what uh, part C of question two is getting at. It's uh, uh, looking at, uh, thinking of this. Uh, oh, wait, wait. I think they said what? Yeah. They're thinking of these uh, specific arrangement of electric and magnetic fields that they've discussed in a couple different places in the textbook. It's, uh, um, it's something that if you do any kind of experiment with um, electric and magnetic field, you will see uh, popping up in different places in AM or atomic molecular and optical physics. Sometimes uh, you set up exactly this as a part of some apparatus designed to do certain things. Okay, uh, third and the last question, um, considering the or last question I'll talk about this, already covered in lecture, you should have seen it, <laughs> um, this, considering the magnetic force law, are the velocity and magnetic field always perpendicular? Yeah, so, um, so I speak about it in more detail in the um, other video that I've alluded to. What it comes down to is you have... Uh, when you're looking at magnetic force law, this is considering this, so magnetic force law says the magnetic force is the charge times the velocity cross product with magnetic field. There are three vectors here. And this question is basically asking uh, the directional relationship between these one, two, three vectors. It's asking for all those possible three pairs of relationship. And really what it comes down to is the cross product. It puts a constraint where this result of the cross product, it must be perpendicular to both of these vectors simultaneously. And in three dimensional space, you can do that. There's a way to do that. That's the cross product to review lecture. Please take a look at it. And, uh, and that's the only requirement that that's set. These two vectors, they can be chosen at random. There's no specific required setup for velocity and magnetic field. Although, you know, a lot of the experimental setups you will see, you will see that often we set it up so that velocity is perpendicular to magnetic field, but this is not a requirement. It's just a choice um, that turns out to be convenient in a lot of different experimental setups. So, so okay, so the, those are the conceptual questions. Um, I think I've, um, yeah, 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 I think <laughs> uh, uh, I've said enough, I think.